Hi, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Welcome again to another one of our Facebook conversations. Uh, we've been having these conversations during the coronavirus outbreak to talk with uh, different individuals that are involved in different elements of this overall impact that we're seeing it has really changed our society over the course of the last few weeks. Our guest today is Ray Sanchez, who is the superintendent of the Ossining School District. Ray has been active not only in managing his school district, which is a fairly large district in Westchester County, but he's served uh, the function of helping to coordinate other school superintendents as uh, all of the school districts work through the shutdown of the schools and some of the uh, related issues. So we're happy to have him here today. Ray, thank you for being on. Thank you, thanks for having me. Uh, let, let's just get an overall picture. How's it going uh, specifically in your world uh, in Ossining with schools shut down? And how do you assess how it's going overall in our schools across Westchester? Yeah, so, so that's a, it's, it's a loaded question in terms of uh, what it really means. I mean, I think number one, everyone is adjusting. Uh, we're all working differently now um, with a real focus on trying to maintain in, uh, some level of continuity for our students and stability, but at the same time adjusting in, in terms of the way we do that. Uh, we've all moved to distance learning, which means uh, a lot of the instruction that takes in, taking place is virtual now. Uh, we're really working hard collectively, not only in Austin, but across the region and really trying to stay connected to our students and our families. Um, one of the things that can get lost in this while we're focusing on the instruction is this level of social connectedness that we really need. We really need to make sure that we're staying in touch with each other and that students have opportunities and families to, uh, to address each other's needs and know that we're all out there for each other. Um, we're all working towards uh, providing childcare. That, that was one of the mandates that the governor had shared with us. Uh, and so for our first responders, and many of us have responded immediately to to ensure that there is childcare for our first responders. Some of us started much earlier and others have been working towards doing that. Um, and also providing various other services to our families. Um, some are in need of food. Uh, some students are in need of just general school supplies. Um, others are in need of technology. Uh, and all those are really important so that we can mitigate any levels of stress. So we're, you know, we're ensuring that they're, they're getting these tools uh, getting the resources so that they can, um, you know, focus on, 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 on their families at this time. From the academic side of the issues, you obviously teach from K to 12, uh, an age range that goes from high school all the way back down to elementary school. As, as you can describe it, what are the challenges of maintaining uh, distance learning for, you know, high school juniors and seniors, and probably a very special challenge with seniors as they're getting ready for college and so forth all the way down to what are the challenges when you're dealing with elementary kids who are obviously much younger and uh, you know, need a different kind of a structure in order to learn? Yeah, I, th I think one of the, to your point, first of all, everything we provide needs to be age appropriate. It's not a one size fits all. Uh, so the way we deliver instruction in the early grade levels is gonna be very different at the secondary. I think at the secondary level, what we can see is more independence. Our students can, can work on projects and various activities very differently than what is happening at the elementaries where we find a lot of our families are uh, serving as the sort of the, the teacher at the home, in the homes, uh, which is a layer and it's a challenge for our families as well. Um, we're, we're working towards providing more resources so our families can utilize various technology tools so that they can, students can work independently at the, at, at the elementary levels. Um, some of these self-paced activities that technology provides us for, provides the opportunity to, to use. Um, and then, you know, going back again to the secondary level, it's, you know, there's, there's the, the overarching concern sometimes of what it means for in terms of state mandates and do we need to kind of pull true to regions um, uh, exams and what that'll look like. But all in all, um, we're trying to move towards more project-based and discussions which can take place in a Google Classroom with our students. From the standpoint of uh, interacting with your school district and the state education department, you know, I know I've, I haven't been a state legislator previously, that uh, the education department has got an infinite number of rules and mandates, things that, uh, you know, require you to, to structure everything you do around a director from, from SED. How flexible have they been? We're, we're in, uh, as, as we're fond of saying, we're in an area of uncharted waters. 
Uh, are you getting the flexibility you need from those waivers and those other mandates that normally would be at your desk? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, in fairness to the uh, to SED, they, they too are trying to adapt to all the changes that are happening right now. Um, we've had numerous conversations with our commissioner and various state education department representatives to talk about what uh, we need. Um, so I could say just generally speaking that they've been very, very helpful. Um, there's still a lot of things that are still in flux and we're not sure of, but mm -hmm. I think there's a, we're, we all realize that they're working hard to try to address our, our concerns. And as soon as they get those answers, they're providing it to us. Sir. Have they told you if you're gonna lose your uh, April vacation week yet? Uh, yeah, that's already been shared. Um, many of us have already made that announcement, um, obviously with some level of concern from community members and from staff, but there's also a, you know, an understanding that these are very different times. What's the reaction been like, uh, Ray, as you deal with the parents and the families? Obviously, a very robust PTA organization, uh, and, and you interact with all family members, regardless of whether they're active in that particular organization or not. Right. How are the parents reacting to the decisions and the change uh, that, that has been thrust upon us all? I think like everyone else, they're trying their best. Um, but I can say, being a parent myself of two very young children, that it's also very stressful. Um, and so, you know, they're, I've heard the challenges of having to work with their child one-on-one -on -one or in small groups uh, if they have two children to try to help them with the various assignments. That's a real challenge when they too might be working at the same time. If you're an educator and a teacher, you're teaching not only uh, the students in your class, but you're also working to help support your own child's learning. So. Um, I think in general, it's, I think everyone is, is working together to make, make do uh, and support their child, but it's been with uh, you know, some level of anxiety and stress that I think we all have to recognize. And I think that's the part that you know, we're, we're also thinking about is how do we help the adults in this period of time? And you have to do a budget this time of the year um, without a lot of uh, you know, stability to know exactly where the revenues are gonna come from. Uh, you have to, I, I assume there's been some delay in school board elections. Uh, where are we at in those structures as far as you're aware? Yeah, so we're, you know, in the midst of, uh, you know, waiting what to, to see what the numbers look like from uh, the state education or from the state when they finish their budget. Um, we're going through various scenarios to try to understand, you know, to, for what ifs uh, and talking to our community about the possibilities of reduced, well, the likelihood of reduced revenue, um, even at the county level, you know, anticipating that sales revenue are gonna be down. Um, they've moved the budget vote to June 1st. Uh, so, you know, whether that gives us more time to have a, a, an adopted budget, that's something that you know, I, I can say generally I, I'm hopeful for it because it gives us more time to engage our community uh, and talk to them about it. So, you know, it's still a little bit of a wait and see, um, but, you know, we'll, as soon as we have uh, the revenue and the, the, the final decisions from the state, we're going to be responding and uh, we're going to continue the process. The other part of our budget that we're concerned about is just what, what impact is this going to have on children academically, social, emotionally? And do we need to be providing something different for them, you know, as we think about 2021? Uh, I would assume the answer to that is yes, but what that is and what we put into our budget for the following year is something that we still need to discuss with our educators, our parents, and our entire community. Well, the decisions that are ahead, again, uh, there's no roadmap. And so I gather that uh, the school board members, the, uh, the other administrators, that you have, we're all trying to figure out how best to, to navigate these waters. Um, I'm not looking for a particular response on this one, but <clears throat> the county government has probably worked more closely with school districts in the last month than we have uh, under most normal circumstances forever. We've been, uh, we've been uh, uh, required by the state to work together on daycare mm -hmm. to make sure that there was a uh, food service situation, and, and we've had meetings and regular phone calls. How is that collaboration working? You've been around a while, so you've had a chance to draw some comparisons. Uh, hopefully, would you say the county school relationship is a good one? No, I think it's been exceptional, quite honestly. I think, uh, you know, both you, George, and the rest of your team have been really responsive. 
Um, as you noted, we have weekly calls to give ourselves update, you know, to make sure that we're up to date. And, and I think too, what I've appreciated, I think we all appreciate uh, is the, you know, receptivity to the feedback that we're providing. I think uh, our calls have provided us the opportunity to, for you to hear, for, for us to hear what updates the county has uh, in terms of what you're hearing from the state, and then also just some general concerns and issues that we need to address locally. Um, and it's been fair and honest conversations. You know, we realize that these aren't the times where they're always going to give us the best and, you know, the, the good news, you know, we, we're giving us the real news and what um, the reality is. And that's given us the opportunity to respond with our community um, and on behalf of the children. So it's, it's really been, you know, from lifting daycare programs to food service, uh, there's been a lot of ongoing conversations and that's been very welcome. Ray, just to uh, wrap it up for the, for the last uh, comment or two, is there any general message that you think uh, the people of Westchester should hear uh, about the status of their school districts? You've, you're undergoing a major, uh, a major change in not being able to finish the academic year in a standard fashion. Um, what, what should the folks out there know about the way you and your colleagues are tackling this problem? Well, I think number one is that we're all taking it head on. Um, we're all working collaboratively. Um, and we all realize that we don't have all the answers. Um, and not suggesting we're, we're failing, but where we, where we see some areas of growth, we recognize it and the parental and community feedback has been very, very helpful. We're all trying to find our sweet spot. Uh, we're finding, trying to find that spot that's from an instructional perspective and then also from you know, resource and support perspective so that no matter how long we're involved in this situation that we're there and responding to our community. So, um, and finally that, you know, I can attest to, you know, the superintendents, the educators and every, we're all working hard tirelessly to make this work for our students, work for our families and work for our community. Well, Ray, we appreciate your commitment and those of your colleagues, Joe Ricker from White Plains and so many others that have done a great job on this uh, broad-based uh, cooperation. We wish you the best. We're there for you to work with you uh, as you see fit. We've been talking with Ray Sanchez, who's the superintendent of the Ossining School District and one of the leaders of uh, the school superintendents, uh, various school district representatives, as we're dealing with the coronavirus outbreak, which has caused the closing of public schools uh, throughout Westchester County and throughout the state. Ray, have a wonderful day. Be safe. And, uh, and we'll see you the next time you tune in. This is All George right. Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Have a terrific day.